Assalamualaikum everyone. So today we are going to continue with chapter 11 which is the last chapter which is on security and ethics. In this topic, we are going to discuss the issues related to business and IT security, ethics and also the society. We are also going to discuss the issues related to ethical responsibility of business professional and ethical guidelines. And we are also going to look into the different types of computer crime and also the privacy issues. There is no question that the use of information technology in businesses and individuals present major security challenges, poses serious ethical questions and affects society in significant ways. In this chapter, we are going to explore the threats to businesses and individuals due to many types of computer crime and unethical behaviour. In this topic, we are going to look into a variety of methods that businesses and individuals use to manage the security and integrity of their business systems. In the previous topics, we have looked at e-commerce and also IR 4.0. We have looked at how technologies have evolved and the importance of using technology in e-commerce. In any IT systems, not just e-commerce, they need to be reliable, secure, and invulnerable to computer attacks. In terms of the information security, it needs to ensure that the data confidentiality, data integrity, and availability are protected. Data confidentiality means protecting the information from disclosure to unauthorized parties. Data integrity is protecting the data from being modified by unauthorized parties and availability means that only authorized people would have the access to the information. Information security is important with or without the use of technology in storing or accessing the information. However, with the use of technology, for example, storing information in the cloud, it might be easier for unauthorized users to try and access those information illegally. In the traditional method, unauthorized users would need to have the physical copy of the papers with those information. While technology simplifies our task, it can be harder to ensure the security of the information. The use of IT in business has a major impact on society and raises ethical issues in the areas of health, employment, privacy, crime, working conditions, and also individuality. So, what does it mean by ethics? Ethics are principles that guide your behavior towards people. For example, you join a membership or register on an e-commerce website as a client. What if those e-commerce websites or those online shops leak your information to a third party? Be very mindful of what you share online and only trust legit websites when they ask for your personal details. In e-commerce or any online shops, Usually, they will use your information, such as your phone number, to send any of the future promotions that they have. Have you had the experience of even when you choose not to receive any promotion, but they still send it? Is that ethical? Business professionals have a responsibility to promote ethical uses of IT in the workplace. Business ethics is concerned with the ethical questions that managers confront as part of their daily business decision making. IT has caused ethical controversy in the areas of intellectual property rights, customer and employee privacy, security of the company information and also the workplace safety. For example, what is the intellectual property or we call it as IP? What is the IP rights of inventions? It can be the patents, copyrights, and also trademarks. We are going to look into this in the next few slides. This figure outlines some of the basic categories of ethical business issues, which include equity, that is being fair and not biased, rights, honesty, and exercise of corporate power which is the law in the business corporation that they need to have authority and control on. Let's look at this example. How can managers make ethical decisions when 
confronted with business issues. Several important alternatives based on theories of corporate social responsibility can be used. We are not going into detail about these theories but to only know the basics of this. For example, in the stockholder theory, managers are the agents of the stockholders. Stockholders and shareholders are the owner of the shares of stock in a corporation and a part owner of the corporation. The manager's ethical responsibility is to increase the profits of the business without violating the law or engaging in fraudulent practices. In the social contract theory, the companies have ethical responsibilities to all members of society which allows corporations to exist according to a social contract. In the stakeholder theory, the managers have an ethical responsibility to manage a firm for the benefit of all its stakeholders, which include all individuals and also the groups. What does it mean by benefit of all its stakeholders? For example, the stakeholders in a company would be the directors, employees, customers, investors, and stockholders. All stockholders are stakeholders. All of them would have an interest in the company as the stakeholders. Another important ethical dimension deals specifically with the ethics of the use of any form of technology is technology ethics. There are four principles of technology ethics that can serve as basic ethical requirements that companies should meet to help evaluate the potential harms or risks of the use of IT and information system in business area. These are in terms of the proportionality, informed consent, justice and minimize risk. In proportionality, the good achieved by the technology must outweigh the harm or risk. There must be no alternative that achieves the same or comparable benefits with less harm or risk. In informed consent, those affected by the technology should understand and accept the risk. Justice means that the benefits and burdens of the technology should be distributed fairly. Those who benefit should bear the fair share of the risk and those who do not benefit should not suffer a significant increase in risk. The risk should also be minimized. Even if judged acceptable by the other three guidelines, the technology must be implemented so as to avoid all unnecessary risk. The four technology ethical principles, which are the proportionality, informed consent, justice and minimized risk, can serve as the basis for ethical conduct by managers and users and also information system professionals. More specific guidelines would include the details policies for ethical computer and internet usage by the employees. Most policies would specify that company computers and networks are company resources that must be used only for work-related users, whether using internet networks or the internet. In previous topics, we have discussed on BYOD, which is bring your own device. How does this fit in with ethics? For example, company computers must be used only for work-related users. So, why should personal computers be used for work-related as well? There should be an agreement in this case. Another example is the Code of Professional Conduct of the Association of IT Professionals AITP, which is an organization of professionals in the computing field. This figure shows the AITP standards of professional conduct. In the standards, it says that in recognition of my obligation to my employer, I shall avoid conflicts of interest and ensure that my employer is aware of any potential conflicts. Protect the privacy and confidentiality of all information entrusted to me. Not misrepresent or holding information in any situation. Not attempt to use the resources of my employer for personal gain or for any purpose without proper approval.
and also not exploit the weakness of a computer system for personal gain or personal satisfaction. The standard also lists out the obligation to the society. For example, use my skill and knowledge to inform the public in all areas of my expertise. To the best of my ability, ensure that the products of my work are used in a socially responsible way and to support, respect and abide by the appropriate local, state, provincial and federal laws. Never misrepresent or hold the information to any problem or situation of public concern nor will I allow any such known information to remain unchallenged. And also, not to use the knowledge of a confidential or personal nature in any unauthorized manner to achieve personal gain. These are the examples of the ethical conducts in the AITP standards. A responsible professional should act with integrity, increases personal competence, sets high standards of personal performance, accepts responsibility for his or her work, and advances the health, privacy, and general welfare of the public. Responsible professional should demonstrate ethical conduct, avoid computer crime, and increase security of any information system that he or she develop. Computer crime or cyber crime. Computer crime is the commission of illegal acts by using a computer or against a computer system. Simply accessing a computer system without authorization or with intent to do harm even by accident is now a federal crime. Computer crime defined by the Association of Information Technology Professionals AITP includes the unauthorized use, access, modification or destruction of hardware, software, data or network resources. The unauthorized release of information, the unauthorized copying of software, denying an end user access to his or her own hardware, software, data or network resources, and using or conspiring to use computer or network resources illegally to obtain information or tangible property. The most frequent cyber crimes are hacking, cyber theft, cyber terrorism, unauthorized use at work, software piracy, theft of intellectual property, computer viruses and worms, and also adware and spyware. We are going to look into this in the next few slides. Hacking is the obsessive use of computers or the unauthorized access and use of network computer systems. A hacker is a person who hacks the computer system. There are three types of hackers, which are the white hat, black hat, and gray hat hackers. White hat hacker is a person that hacks to test his own security system. Black hat hacker hacks for malicious or personal gain. And gray hat hackers are doing both, where the unauthorized access in the computer system could be for personal gain or to help with the security defect. Hackers can hack into a computer system and read the files but neither stealing or damaging anything or monitor email, access web server, transfer file or steal network files, extract passwords, plan data that will cause a system to welcome intruders. A cracker is a malicious or criminal hacker who maintains knowledge of the vulnerabilities found and exploit for private advantage for not revealing them to the general public. For example, the Bitcoin blackmail ransom that happened before, they asked to be paid in Bitcoin to avoid the hack information to be leaked to the public. Cyber theft. What is cyber theft? It is the act of stealing financial or personal information through the use of computers. Many computer crimes involve the theft of money. The majority are inside jobs that involve unauthorized network entry and alternation of computer databases to cover the tracks of the employees involved. Many attacks occur through the internet. Most companies don't reveal that they have been targets or victims of cybercrime because they fear scaring customers and provoking complaints by shareholders. Cyber terrorism is the leveraging of an organization's or government's computer and information via the internet to cause physical, real-world harm or severe disruption of infrastructure. 
cyber terrorism is also a form of hacking. For example, cyber attacks by using or exploiting the computer and communication networks, such as the denial of service attacks DDoS. It is an attempt to make the online service unavailable by overwhelming it with traffic from multiple sources. Unauthorized use of computer systems and networks is time and resource theft, such as doing private consulting, doing personal finances, playing video games, and unauthorized use of the internet or company networks. Sniffers are used to examine streams of data packets that flow between computers on the network as well as between network computers. It is used to monitor the network traffic or capacity. This can be done through software such as Wireshark or the command line tool or terminal such as using TCP dump in Unix and WinDump in Windows. You can look into this in more detail if you are interested to see and know what happened behind the scene when, for example, you Google for something on the internet. Sniffers can be used to determine the causes of slowdowns that happen in the network. Sniffing exposes the security problem of an unsecured physical connection to the network. For example, a high volume of outbound traffic could indicate that a hacker is using your application. Software piracy is unauthorized copying of computer programs. Unauthorized copying is illegal because software is protected by copyright law and user licensing agreement. Purchasing software is really a payment for a license for fair use by an individual and user. Site license legally allows a certain number of copies for use by the employees at a particular location. Adobe, for example, uses the cloud-based subscription model to prevent piracy. Shareware is a software that allows to make copies of software for others. So, what is the main difference between shareware and freeware? In a shareware, we can share the limited version of the software free trial. In freeware, everything is free and can be used. However, keep in mind that freeware is copyrighted software. Public domain software is a software that is not copyrighted. What does it mean by open source software? Is it part of public domain software? In open source software, they have restrictions. It is copyrighted. However, the codes are available to inspect, modify, and enhance by the public. In public domain software, it has no copyright. The codes are available and it is owned by the public. For example, Google Chrome is a cross-platform web browser developed by Google. Most of Chrome's source code comes from Google's free and open source software project that is called Chromium. Chrome is licensed as proprietary freeware. Theft of intellectual property, IP. Intellectual property refers to the creations of the mind for which exclusive rights are recognized. It protects the intangible creative work that is embodied in physical form, such as musical, literary and artistic works, discoveries and inventions, and words, phrases, symbols, and also designs. IP theft occurs in the form of infringements of copyrighted material such as music, videos, images, articles, books, and other written works. This is because digital version on the internet can easily be captured by computer systems, shared on the internet, or disseminated by email attachment. Peer-to-peer -peer networking techniques have made it easy to trade pirated intellectual property. To reduce the theft of the IP, such as illegal downloading of music and video, publishers have offered inexpensive online music. Plagiarism is the process or practice of using another person's idea or work and pretending that it is your own. In assignment 1, I have talked about plagiarism and the importance of reconstructing sentences, citation and references to avoid plagiarizing other people's work. I have showed you how you can use a simple Google search for plagiarized sentences or using thin in. Common types of IP rights include copyright, 
trademarks and patents. Copyright is the author's or creator's right. It is a form of protection granted for original works of authorship fixed in a tangible medium of expression. It covers both published and unpublished works such as books, computer software and music. Copyright protection is from the moment the work is created. There is no need to register for copyright. Trademarks protect the words, phrases, symbols and designs. It is a recognizable sign, design or expression which distinguishes products or services of a particular trader from the similar products or services of other traders such as industrial design. Trademarks can be registered at the national or regional level for some fee. To be covered internationally, trademarks need to be applied through the protection form in each country. Patent is the right for inventor to exclude others from making, using, selling and importing an invention or implementation of an idea for a limited period of time, such as the new gadgets. To get a patent, Technical information about the invention must be disclosed to the public in a patent application. It is also territorial rights. Patents can be applied through Patent Cooperation Treaty PCT, where it covers the protection in more than 140 countries. European Patent Office EPO covers the protection in 30 countries in Europe. In UUM, we have the Innovation and Commercialization Center, ICC. They can advise on copyright, trademarks, and patents. Computer viruses and worms. A virus is a program code that cannot work without being inserted into another program. It attaches itself to a program or file, for example, in an executable file that requires human action to spread by running the program. A worm is a distinct program that can run unaided or a virus that spreads itself not just from file to file but from computer to computer via the internet and online services such as email or file attachment. Worm is a malware. It is able to replicate itself. For example, a user clicks on a link or open a file from an email. It will infect the machine and replicate itself by emailing everyone in your email list. Trojan horse is another example of a malware. It hides within or looks like a legitimate program. It creates a backdoor on your computer that gives malicious user access to your system. For example, they can use it to control your PC remotely. These programs copy annoying or destructive routines into network computer systems of anyone who accesses infected computers. A computer virus or worm can spread destruction displace humorous messages or destroy the contents of storage devices. Adware and spyware. Adware, which is advertising supported software, is a software that automatically displays or downloads advertising material such as banners or pop-ups when a user is online without the consent of the computer user. Adware can also collect information about the users. This type of adware is called spyware and is defined as any software that employs users' internet connection without their knowledge. Spyware can collect almost any type of data, including personal information like internet surfing habits, user logins, and bank or credit account information. Spyware can also interfere with a user's control of a computer by installing additional software or redirecting web browsers. Some spyware can change computer settings, which can result in slow internet connection speeds, unauthorized changes in browser settings, or changes to software settings. It is important to understand that not all adware programs are spyware. On your browser, you can install the plugin to block any adware. You can also install spyware remover and adware remover. Other than those, you can also use, for example, Norton 360 or McAfee Total Protection to protect against viruses, spyware, and adware. This figure shows how you can protect yourself from computer crime. For example, 
use antivirus and firewall software and update it often to keep destructive programs off your computer. You should not allow online merchants to store your credit card information for future purchases and to use a hard-to-guess password that contains a mix of numbers and letters and change it frequently. It is also important to use the most up-to-date version of your web browser, email software and other programs. And also, don't open any email attachments unless you know the source of the incoming messages. Privacy issues. The power of information technology to store and retrieve information can have a negative effect on every individual's right to privacy. For example, in terms of violation of privacy, identity theft, computer monitoring or stalking, fraud, computer matching, and also unauthorized access to personal files. Examples of violation of privacy would include accessing individuals' private email conversations and computer records, and also collecting and sharing information about individuals gained from their visits to internet websites. Identity theft is stealing someone's identity to gain access to resources or obtain credit and other benefits in that person's name. For example, creating fake account pretending to be someone else. This happened pretty frequently on social media. Computer monitoring or stalking is getting unwanted or obsessive attention by an individual or group towards another person. For example, Always know where a person is. As a rule of thumb, you should only update your Facebook or Twitter only after you have left the location. Avoid posting about your routine or update about where you live. Fraud is intentional deception or trick made for personal gain or to damage another individual. In computer matching, customer information that are gained from many sources are used to market additional business services. Unauthorized access of personal files, for example, the details about the customer such as the telephone numbers, email addresses, credit card numbers and other information to build customer profiles. Protecting your privacy on the internet. There are multiple ways to protect your privacy. For example, do not post personal information on the internet. Don't reveal personal data and interests on online service and website user profiles. You should always encrypt your emails. Send news group postings through anonymous emailers. Ask your ISP not to sell your name and information to mailing list providers and other marketers. You should maintain the current updates and patches for your operating system. Install, use and maintain current versions of firewalls and antivirus softwares and also conduct transactions only with reputable businesses. These are some of the examples that you can do to protect your privacy. Privacy laws in Malaysia, the Personal Data Protection Act 2010 PDPA is an act that regulates the processing of personal data in regards to commercial transactions. It has the objective of protecting the personal data of individuals with respect to commercial transactions. This act applies to any person who collects and processes personal data. That's all about this chapter. To summarize, we have looked at issues related to business and IT security, ethics and society. We have also looked at issues related to ethical responsibility of business professional and ethical guidelines. We have looked at different types of computer crime such as hacking, cyber theft, cyber terrorism, unauthorized use at work, software piracy, and also theft of IP. We have covered about computer viruses and worms and looked at adware and spyware. And lastly, we have discussed about privacy issues and how to protect the privacy on the internet. On online learning, I have posted some questions related to this topic. Try and answer these questions and we will discuss it in the next class. That's all. Thank you.